archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. A long gap has passed between our talks. Yes. During that long time, there have been many happenings in your family and in your health also. Yeah, that's I right. have come to know that you lost your dear son. I am so sorry for that. Yes. In our first talk, we talk about your son who was studying engineering, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. What about his result? He secured distinction marks. Distinction? Yes. Very good. <laughs> okay. But unfortunately, he has left you, yeah. and we are so sorry for that. Yeah, on the 6th June. Okay, on the 6th June. Yeah. In addition to that, nearly after that, you are also become ill. Yes. And you were attacked by a serious sickness. <laughs> and what is your illness? Can My you tell illness. me, please? They said it's a aneurysm. Aneurysm? Yes. Okay. So did you go to other places? Yes, out? we've gone to Bangalore, Nimhans, and in Delhi. Delhi. Ames. Okay. What did your doctor say in that before you come back? Well, not very bad, but... I didn't go for, I mean, uh, surgery, you know. I see. Because there might be a disadvantage. Without surgery, I hope you become recover. Let's hope. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's hope for the best, it's, if God willing. <laughs> God will walk yeah. according to his will yes. about your health. And let us hope that you will be coming better and better. God is looking after me. Okay. I'm very happy. I see. Thank you very much. So, let us continue our talk. Okay. Now, I would like to ask you some questions about various things. For my first question, how are you involved in social works? What responsibilities have you borne at national level, state level, and district level, and even in local area level? And I think okay. you have been involved in many, many things. <laughs> Can you tell me in what thing did you or are you being involved? Within my limited capabilities, I'm actively involved in social works. To mention some of my involvements here are few, let me tell you. In MHEP, that is a Mizo Women Federation, I hold the president's post since 1984 till date in our branch, in a, this see. local area. It's been 22 years now. This federation aims at helping women and children in need and uplifting their social status. I also was a member of the executive member of the MHEP headquarters from 1987 to 1990. MHEP headquarters, you mean the whole of Mizoram? Yes. And uh, a president, All India Radio Agrid Artist Union, and then senior advisor, Mizo Drama Society. And also advisor, Mizo Students Union, Mizo Students Union, MSU. And advisor, Mizo Student Self Support General Headquarters. Oh. Advisor, Mizo Charlie Chaplin Film Corporate since 1998 till date. Board of Advisor, Center for Environment Protection, that is CEP, since 2000 AD till date. Then also I am the treasurer of the Academy of Letters from 1993 till date. Member High Court Legal Authority Committee, member Committee on Planning on and Development Government of Mizoram, member State Level Committee on Green Mizoram, member State Level Committee on Naming of Streets in Town, member Dowry Prohibition Advisory Board since 1999. Member Mizoram State Commission for Women, 2001, 2003, 2004, 2006. There are five women members only in this commission in our okay. state. Excuse me, let me interrupt you. So in these organizations or committees, it is different things and various things you have been involved in. That means you are all around our not exactly, okay, but... <laughs> uh, what else can you tell me? Please continue. And then I'm the member, Committee on Selection of Mizo Silabi, a member NEIZCC 1998 to 2001 and 2002 oh. till date. Member Voluntary Action Bureau, <laughs> VIB, 2000. And member Expert Textbook Committee, Mizoram Board of School 
Education, Member Don Bosco Higher Secondary School Managing Board, Member Aizol College Governing Board, 1988. And then Member Central School Zebabok Governing Board in 1988. And then a Member Bunkon College Governing Board, Member All India Radio Program Advisory Board, Member Mizou Ram State Pollution Control Board, Member Pariyavaran Vahini, that's the meaning is uh, Environment Brigade in Mizoram. Member All India Radio Audition Board. Member Committee on the Celebration of the 50th Anniversary of Gandhiji's Martyrdom. Member State Wildlife Advisory Board. Member Roshni Mizoram Brands from 1992. Oh, let me interrupt you again. What is Roshni? Roshni is the... Uh, it's like a women federation. The, the whole of India. India. It's, yeah. Vice Chairman, Sainuni Memorial School Governing Board. Board of Advisors, Endangered Species Protection Group. Conciliator, Lok Adalat, Mizoram, only in 1991. Advisor, Film Industry of Mizoram, 1996 till 1999. Advisor, Mizoram Wildlife and Nature Foundation, 2001. Script Writer, Talker, All in the Radio and Dordar Shankendra. Treasurer Zawoy Paul, that is the All India Radio Mizoram Artist Union. I was the editor of Epata oh. magazine, Bunkon Pastorate Charge Women Fellowship publication in 1985 till 1990. And then I was the editor of Run Moy Tu, MHEP magazine in 19, I don't remember, maybe in 1985, I think. Okay, if I am not mistaken, the least you have told me is nearly about 40 in number. <laughs> so it is so many engagement and activities you have been engaged in. So I think it may be sometimes difficult the program of those committees and corporations, associations, organizations might class sometimes to attend the committee. Have you faced such problem? Yeah, sometimes. But actually, I was not a member of some of the committee only in one year like that, you know. Oh. So, yes, I have come to know that you were a teacher, now you are the headmistress yes. in a particular school, but in different school managing board you were the members. That means you are also a good teacher, a good headmistress, because such different schools management board invited you to be a member. <laughs> so, I'm Maybe. very glad for that. Okay, uh, let me ask you another question about the church okay. with the Mizo people are said to be all Christian, 100% Christian. Yeah. And in how do you involve yourself in the activities of church? Yeah, let me tell you, involved in church activities. I was the chairman of Bunkon Pastorate Women Fellowship since 1999 till 2002. I see. And chairman Mizo Women Group Nazari Vang Church in a local church in 1999 yes, till 2002. Local yes, I see. and I was the secretary pastorate book five time, 1985 till 91 book five time. Oh, what, Refers what, to oh. a portion of rice that is set aside every time the, char the rice is cooked. The accumulated rice is then collected from every household of the church, which is then sold. The money thus received is utilized for various missions. Oh, I see this Bufai Tram. I hope it would be very, very useful for yeah, the propagation useful. of the gospel. Yes. Do you know that in other places, other states or other countries, do other Christians practice this Bufai Tram? Uh, I don't Rice know. Rice collection. But they said that uh, this Bufai Tram was started in Meghalaya a hundred oh, years ago. I see. <laughs> so in Mizoram also, uh, who started this uh, practice of Bufai Tram? Yeah, the missionaries, the Zosab Luya, uh, Zosab Luya, uh, D. E. Jones' wife, I see. was the one who started ah, this. We may so call her Piluyi. Yeah, Piluyi. Yes, yes, I see. Very okay, good. then I was a secretary book on Pastorate Church Women Committee from 1991 till 1998. That is six years. I see. Assistant secretary Presbyterian Church Women Fellowship Central Committee in 1993 to 1996 and again 2003 
2005, six years, that means. Uh, when, uh, what do you mean by central committee? Mm, uh, state, sorry, level committee. state level committee. State level committee, yes. that the whole of Mizoram, yeah. I see. And <coughs> then financial territory, Presbyterian Church Women Fellowship, central committee, state level, oh. in 1997 to 98. Central committee member, state level committee from 2005 to 2007 now, oh. I am the committee member. Yes. And then I was the executive uh, member, Synod Ecumenical Decade in 1988 till 98, that is 10 years, Ecumenical Decade. Okay. And then member, Gospel Centenary Music Committee, Mizoram Synod, 1992 till 94. Member, Standing Committee of the Presbyterian Women Fellowship, Shillong, 1997 to 98. Uh, when you say about Gospel Centenary Music Committee, Mizoram Synod, 1992 to 94, when was the Mizoram Gospel Centenary was celebrated? In 1994. 94. Yeah. That means the Gospel came to Mizoram in 1894. Yeah. Am I right? 100 years ago. Okay. So we published this committee, published our souvenir and all, you know. I okay. was a committee member. Yes, I have come to know that you have been engaged yourself in the church activities and you have many, many involvements and you are one of the most important person even in the church, not only in literature field. <laughs> okay, let me ask you another question. Uh, can you tell me your contributions towards national integration? Because national integration is very important since in India, many races, many tribes and sub-tribes are living together. Yeah. So our past leaders, say uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Mahatma Gandhi, those past leaders also tried to take all those tribes and races together in one country. Therefore, till today, national integration is one of the most important yes. topics for Indians. Yeah, actually, I do not have much contributions towards national integration, but some of my contributions in this field pertaining to my songs and oh. composition in All in the Radio and Dudashan Kendra, along with my talks, are such as, let me tell you some. Oh. In Pum Khatnahla, that is national integration song, I which I composed. In 1983, uh, the song, so, which finds a place in class five and sometimes in class seven syllabus for more than 10 years. Now from 2005, this song is included in class eight, Mizo textbook. Oh, this good. song, which I had recorded in All India Radio, has been frequently broadcasted. Oh. Besides this, the song I composed, Demise of Mrs. Indra Gandhi, the welcome song I composed at the visit of the Rajiv and Sonia in Mizoram, 1986, may be worth mentioned. Oh, of course. I had also composed a special song at the inauguration of the Art Satellite Station in 1980, mm. which at that time was the only one in the whole of Northeast India. It is only due to this station that we have an access to Star TV, etc. Oh, very good. Very important. The song I composed in 2001 AD entitled Jun Katrin, Born of the Same Mother. I see. It means something like that. Which I had recorded in All India Radio earlier is now sung by one new uh, popular artist, Dadui, Lorindiki Kyangte. And it has uh, become a hit number, especially among the Mizo origins living in Manipur. Tripura and Chimtipu district. Yes, very good. You have uh, a lot of contributions to what well, national but... integration also. Uh, <laughs> that will be a great blessing for the whole India, I hope. Okay. And the next question is, has your documentary film been made? If yes, who made it and when? Now I'm working on my documentary film. The work is started in the year 2000. It is on the finishing line. For this, Mr. F. Framwana helps me with the photography, including the picture taken while cutting my hair, which was 89 inches long, oh. on the January 14th, 2002. Now it is being edited in Rem Family Pictures. It's almost finished now. Okay. Then, uh, have any other writer written about you in newspaper, magazine, or something else? Uh, who wrote 
where and how. Oh yes, I've been focused in many newspapers, magazines in relation to my songs, my composition, my long hair, my writing, and my contributions as social workers. Uh, I can't tell you the uh, all of the newspaper and magazine that writes about me for 33 years since 1972. Yes, sure. <laughs> I still have copies of those dailies, weeklies, monthlies in which I was focused. So I'll highlight uh, only the papers which are published outside the state with, with the news about me, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, number one. In USA and Canada, while on tour between January to May 1978 in a gospel singing mission, I was interviewed by a journalist, Mrs. Laurie Lodge, who then produced a booklet titled, Her Grandpa Was a Head Hunter. A year later, making 50,000 copies. The booklet contains my testimony, how our ancestors were headhunters, but with the blessing of the gospel, uh, we are now in a position to sing hallelujah chorus. It also has the photograph taken while I was singing, group photo of the Mizo choir, etc. It has been reprinted every year, so more than Lacks of copies have been printed. This okay. uh, an additional question I want to ask you is, uh, from uh, this, I have come to know that you visited USA and Canada in 1978 as a choir, gospel singing, you say? Yeah, I was the soloist of the Mizo Choir. I see. Yeah, we visited uh, 27 states of USA and Canada uh, between January to May 1978. Did you visit again? No. Okay. After that, I uh, got married. <laughs> okay, please continue. And then, All India Radio Akashvani magazine, Delhi, published my picture and personal account on February 1974. They told me that I was the only tribal girl at that time uh, whose story was written in that magazine okay. in 1974. So and in the light of life, a popular Christian magazine published from Mumbai my long testimony on how I met my Savior Jesus Christ was published under the heading Pop Singer for Jesus in 1976, May issue. And then the Statesman on the 28th November 1976 under the heading Girl with golden voice. Okay. <laughs> Miss Lelstang Zwali is Mizoram's girl with a golden voice, a pop artist who became a gospel singer. She composes her own songs and comes alive in Mizo. Like that they have written, you know, in okay, the statesman. Okay, statement commences also. <laughs> Girls with golden voice. Yeah. Uh, before I got married. I see, I it's a long see. time back. Okay. <laughs> And in In Current Topics magazine, often known as India's best career journal, I was included in the Who's 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 Who column in January issue, 1977, with the statement: "Mizogal Lalsang Zwali, a well-known pop singer who has since become a famous gospel singer, she composes her own songs." <laughs> and then, yeah, very good comment. A Magazine, New Delhi, 1974, February issue, carried my picture and story. And then next is uh, Sunday Magazine, March 9 to 15, 1986, issue uh, paced my photograph in my long hair with a caption, Locks Her Key to Fame. Yeah, mm -hmm. now you have told me that various magazines and uh, newspapers wrote about you. Did they send you a copy of those? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then if they didn't send me also, I, I, I can get it from the market. I see, <laughs> I, I see. Okay, and then Sunday Magazine, May 25th, 31, 1986, described my long hair under the heading Indian Rapunzel. <laughs> okay, Indian it's Rapunzel. A, it's a Rapunzel. Oh, okay, uh, could you tell me why did they say 
about your long hair as Indian Rapunzel. Rapunzel is a story of a, well, a fairy tales, you okay, know. Okay. There was a fairy tale who, who has a very long hair, yes, yes. like the Rapunzel. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then Dong Musa, this is a popular Khasi newspaper, showed my picture with my long hair open, taken while I was oh, singing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the Sentinel, that is a not is newspaper in English, published my picture while singing with a guitar and open hair. That means sometimes you also sang in open hair? Yeah. I they see. asked me to <laughs> live open, you know, okay. open my hair. Long because hair. of their request. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then Post and Telegraph New Delhi publication, Doctor, oh. the name was Doctor, oh. published my picture along with the song I composed and sang on the inauguration of Aizol Satellite Station. My song was written both in Mizo and English version in that paper. In 1986, a semis magazine published from Guwahati reproduced my poem, Zo Shakespeare Van Kama, in its original Mizo version. I was very surprised to see that, because I, I didn't stand it, or I don't know from where <laughs> oh. did they, they mean, get this. That means the song you compose is entitled Zo Shakespeare, Shakespeare Van, Van Kama. Kama. Yeah, about uh, Van Kama, who, a Mizo poet. Um, very popular poet. Okay, that means Van Kama is compared to Shakespeare. Yeah. As the English had Shakespeare, the Mizo also has Van Kama. And then the North is Sun Daily, a uh, weekly Sun magazine, which is choice magazine among the youth, and very popular, has put two of my pictures holding guitar and displaying my long hair with the heading reads, Nightingale of Mizoram, yeah. <laughs> along with my personal accounts that read, Lal Sang Zwali Silo is a Mizoram leaving Rapunzel for her 82 inches of long and flowing hair which sweeps the ground as she ambles on. My hair was 85 when I cut it on 14th January 2002. And then Gulf Daily, Published from Bahrain, this is United Arab Emirates, April 15th in 1986, had given account of my long hair along with my picture under the heading, a hairstyle that's down to earth. It was written that Indian singer Lal Sang Zwali Silo claims the longest hair in the world which sweeps the floor and has grown to two meters. Mrs. Silo, 37, from Aizol in the eastern states of Mizoram has the local flocking to see her flowing locks, AFP satellite photo. It was written like this. Okay, okay. It's very beautiful. <laughs> mm, the copy of this newspaper was given to me, you know, by one Catholic sister of Marymount School, uh, whose brother was working in oil company in Bahrain City and had seen the paper and seeing the name Aizol and a Mizo picture caught his eyes instantly and thus sent the clipping to his sister in Aizol. The moment this sister saw me, she recognized me as the lady in her picture, so uh, she handed me the paper bearing the photograph. It was really wonderful. <laughs> and the Pioneer Daily, published from New Delhi, had my picture taken immediately after I received Padmasri Commenting on my plate, it captioned, freeze framed, prize plate, like that, you know, okay, they comment. Okay. <laughs> then one thing I still remember was in my most popular days, I used to occupy the headlines in the newspaper, like Miss Lalsanzwali at civil hospital, Miss oh. Lalsanzwali visit jail, and best composer and greatest singer, etc., along with my photograph, I like see. that, you know. Mm. The Northeast Sun, July 31st, 2004, under the heading, The Nightingale with Long Locks. This magazine displayed my picture, receiving Padma Award from President K. R. Narayanan with full story of my life and achievements. And lastly, Eastern Panorama, June 2004, the heading, 
A set of living generation is all about my profile with picture showing off my long hair. Mm -hmm. I have documented the copies of all these magazines and newspapers that I have mentioned. Okay, thank you very much. Here, okay. the comments, a set of living generation is a very, very beautiful comment <laughs> about you. Many magazines and newspapers mentioned about your long hair. Many friends have asked me this question. Yes. Before I got it cut, I had borne it for a long time. When I washed it, it was uh, very difficult to dry it up. Okay, okay. It's a problem, you know. Oh. And in addition to this, it was so heavy that I was uh, weary with uh, bearing it long. The, and I also felt that it affected my health. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. When, how did you feel that your long hair affected your hair? It made headaches or... Uh, yeah, sometimes, dizzy. you know, my... I used to, like, aching here, ache in my neck sometimes, you know. But I don't know whether it's really affected or not. <laughs> okay, before you cut it, you had born for a long time. About 30 years, I think. I see. <laughs> did you contest any long hair competition no, in India was, or abroad? No, no, no. Actually, I was... no. There was uh, no competition here in India and in Mizoram. Oh. But in UK, they used to have a long hair competition organized by hair magazine, annual competition. Did you come to know at that time yeah, that I, there was a competition? Yeah, in 1983 and 84, I saw the first prize winner photograph. Uh -huh in Illustrated Weekly, so... Do you remember how long was that? It was only 59 and a half inches, you know? Oh, it is much shorter than your yeah. hair. Yeah. My hair was 30 inches longer than that, you know? Okay. That's why I stand my, you know, one piece of my piece hair. Of hair. Yes, yeah, piece yes. of hair. Envelope. Envelope. Yeah. I see. Uh, to, in London. Oh. There was uh, my friend, so... <laughs> They okay. went to the editor of the hair magazine. I was interested to compete yeah. in that annual competition, but they said it's only for, it's not for an Indian, they said. Mm. Okay, for... <laughs> only for, for UK. U UK only. But they published it, the uh, longest hair in the world. They should say that it's longest hair in Britain, like oh. that, you know. If you were permitted and if you had contested in that competition, it is very clear and yeah, sure I that think you would so. won the first prize easily. <laughs> in that year, you know, the first prize winner was Lucy Salazar. I still have the photograph <laughs> also. Uh, in the beginning of our talk, you have told me that the number of your books was only about 20. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, I have read your book more than that. Yeah. Can you number again? <laughs> Please think of it. I think it is more than 20. Yes. Actually, I have completed 25 books and three booklets, all, uh, all together? printed in the press. Yes, all together 28 now. Or oh, 28. Yes. Okay. You are a Padmasri awardee in the field of literature. Do you aim at writing more books? Oh, yes, of course. My songs and poems have been published in two volumes. Now I have had more about 20 songs, not yet published. Yes, yes. I'm intending to publish all my songs and poems in one book. This is being printed. Actually, in the first volume was published in 1984. How many songs was included in that first volume? 160 songs was included. Oh, so many, so much. Yeah. Yes, in the second Yeah, one. after eight years, in 1992, we published again volume two, songs composed by Lil Sounds Wally Silo. It was, I mean, 140 songs in were included. In volume two? Yes. Only? Yeah. That means all 300 books was already published. Songs. Yeah. Now, about 60-something or 70 or more, I don't know. Oh. I can't remember. This is being printed. If so, when you publish all your songs in one book, it will be 
a thick book, no? <laughs> yeah. It will contain so many, many songs. I think so. more oh. than 300 more songs. More than 300, oh, so yes. many. <laughs> uh, I think you are the women who compose such many, many songs. I think you were the first one in Mizo. Maybe <laughs> in Indians, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Then what else besides that song's book? Any other books are you intending to write? Yes. You know, the next one is Kain Puanna, my confession book, which has been printed four times. This is to be enlarged, since this kind of book is rare in our language. Okay. So Kain Puanna, my confession. Yes. What do you confess in that book? <laughs> <laughs> I confess. I think it is a, a my somewhat mistakes like a joke. And, no? Yeah, jokes. Okay, it's okay. Humor. <laughs> I see. This kind of book is quite rare, you know, in oh. our language. That's why people like to read this so kind of book. You have printed that book four times, no? Yes. Four times. Uh, in 1999 uh, and 2000. How many copies did you About 6,000. More than uh, 6,000, I think. Altogether in Already four sold. times, no? Yes. I mm -hmm. see. Many. And you know, the third project her book is... Kovel Arsiengte, which means the star of the world. What do you mean by saying the star of the world? You know, the great women in the world. Oh, the great women in the world. In that book, who are the women you want to include in your book? If oh. you cannot mention all the names of the women, uh, many you can women mention some actually, of yeah, all like. You know, Indra Gandhi, Condoleezza Rice, Golda Meir, Hillary Clinton, Kiran Bedi, like uh, Sonia Gandhi, oh. German Chancellor, this uh, Angela Merkel. Many women, great women. And the greatest women in the world. Yes. Okay. Do like we... Mother Teresa. Okay, yeah, Mother like Teresa. Also, yeah. Why do you want to publish such great women in a book? Excluding men. Because, you know... <laughs> Since you are a woman, yeah. you are fellow women, <laughs> you want to write the story of your yeah, fellow I like, women, I think. I like to read. I'm interested, you know, okay. in writing about women. So <laughs> if you write such great stories of women in the world, people may see that women are not lower status <laughs> than men. Maybe. Okay, it will be a very good book. And you know, people like to read these biographies. Oh. It's very interesting. Okay, okay. So in that book, how many women would you like to include? I can't say exactly, but uh, about 15 okay. or more. 15 or Maybe more. Maybe 20, okay, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, it will be a good book, I hope. Yeah, I know. Then My fourth project is about wildlife protection. Wildlife protection. Yeah. Why do you want to write wildlife protection? Wildlife Are you interested prote in preserving, protecting the wildlife? Yeah, I'm interested in this uh, preservation of wildlife and environment. I have written two books also, you know, just published I mean, five years ago. Have you also written yeah. a song? A song? Yeah, uh, a song also, this subject. poetry and all. Because it's very important, this wildlife preservation. Oh, in civilized countries, wildlife protection, environment, <laughs> important thing. Now. Yeah, for example, wildlife activists like Bonnie Raitt, John Denver, Olivia Newton-John in India, we have Maneka Gandhi, mm -hmm. Baba Amte, and his son, Dr. Prakash Amte. Like, about those uh, stories, how they worked for the preservation of wildlife and environment, oh. I have collected. If we do not preserve those wildlife, now some of the animals will also extinct again. Yeah. So this therefore we must continue very to, necessary. to preserve, to protect those life. Yeah, that is very, very important, yeah. of course. Then what is the next? Have you any other projects? Yeah, the fifth one is that, you know, Captain Brown was killed in Changsil by the Mizos. It was uh, about 120 years back okay. that the Battle of Changsil between the British Army and the Mizos was written by the successor of Captain Brown, Major McCabe, Superintendent of Lushai Hills. I'm willing to reproduce that battle 
in Mizou language. Okay, you say Changsil. Chang I think it is the name of place, no? Yeah, not very far from Aizol, oh. Sairang. Oh, Sairang. Just uh, near Sairang. I think near the bank of River Long. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that brown killed by the Mizou, you said brown is who was he? He was the, the British army. Yeah, Captain Brown was Captain the Brown. British Army. He was the superintendent of Los Angeles, I think, that time. Okay, okay. You have a lot of projects on Hang. I hope you will have a chance to work all your projects. In addition to writing books, have you any other books besides you have mentioned? Yeah. Before we go to another question. Okay, the sixth book is uh, Mizo Women and Politics. Mizo Women and Politics. Okay, okay. <laughs> Who are the Mizo women politicians who are famous in Mizoram? Many I think you are trying to collect those famous women politicians. Yeah, about between 1850 and 1900. You know, there It's were many Mizo women, what is the chief tennis, mm. after their husbands died. They ruled over their village. Many of them oh, I have we, collected. That means uh, widow chieftainess. Widows, yeah. They became chieftainess, you know. Uh -huh. They were widows, actually. <laughs> And then, till today, we have some Mizo women politician. Oh. So, can you name some of the women politicians? You mean nowadays? Uh, that you are willing to include in your book? Oh, 100 years ago, Like Van Wai Tangi, Dar Billy, wife of uh, Nau Chuma, oh. Dar Zo Sum Kungi, wife of Lal Chuma, like uh, Voda's wife, Van Wai Liana's wife. They uh, were all chieftains. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Ropi Liani. Many of them. Oh. And then in MDC also we have oh. 1954. Madan era. Uh, yeah, in Madan era, like Pilazik Silo. Piping Liani, Pirokung and all that. Okay. And then during this, uh, before we we became state, what, uh, UT, oh. Union Territory, oh. we had MLA like Pisap Tony. And then after we became a state, we have many other, like not many, like Pitan Siami. Oh, Pitan Siami, and, MLA. Yeah, MLA. And who else? Pitan Siami, Pitan Moi. Oh, Pitan Moi. And we had one minister also, Pila Limpui. Yes, yes, Pila Limpui. Yeah, in 1988. Remember? I think the only women minister in the Yes, Mizoram yeah, state. like that. I have collected about uh, those women. Oh. In the first part of that period, yeah. Ropuiliani, I think Ropuiliani is very famous. Very f Her name is also associated with your name. <laughs> Why? Because I have written about Ropuiliani. And A book. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. In 1999, it was the uh, book of the year. The book of the year. Yeah. Selected by? Mizo who? Academy of Letters. Okay, okay. Very good, <laughs> very good. That's why Ropilian's name is still famous to yeah. modern people also. <laughs> Then, have you any more works or projects on hand, in addition to those to write books? Any other projects or any works? Oh. Yes, uh, now I have two audio recorded cassettes album okay. to be released. What are they? You know, one is Mizo Modern Song, which has been recorded in 2000, I see. but not yet released. The second one is Mizo Gospel Songs, recorded in 2005. These two cassettes album will be released when we find opportunity. Okay, that's two cassettes is to be released yeah. at a time? Or Separate time? Separate. separate. Okay. The other one is uh, what I have said about my documentary film is about to get... Ready, no? Yeah, which is also to be released soon. I hope my documentary film. So that documentary film is now got ready or... Almost, almost. Almost, okay. yeah. Okay. So in your documentary films, how did you act about your childhood. Could you start from your childhood? Yeah. When Then, when I was born, like my mommy's uh, and my father, 
Oh, you will know. So, <laughs> in your documentary films, like uh, what cinema, cinema film, yeah. did you act like that? No, not act. No. It's a true story. Okay. okay. <laughs> you have a lot of projects to work. Now, you were unfortunately attacked by a serious illness, let me say. How do you feel you were ill health and you were projects? Uh, mm. It may be difficult for you to work all these projects yes. in spite of ill health. That is my great problem. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to complete all these projects. Anyway, I put my trust in God. He will guide me as His will. If I have an assistant, I still hope that I can do these things in spite of my ill health. <laughs> Let's hope for the best. Now, you have a lot of works on hand, but you are still in bed. But if God continue His blessings on you, you may become better, stronger, and I hope you can do all these projects. You can work out completely, fully. Mm. Let and, us hope oh, for the best. Many young men and women are straying from the right path of life by abusing drugs and sex. If this practice is not checked, our country will suffer more and more. I have come to know that you are interested in checking this malpractice. Could you tell me what did you do to check this problem? Yes, I worry very much the drug abuse. I wrote two songs, Rol Thar Tang Fan Fan, which means you'd make your greatest efforts to abstain from drug abuse. And the other song is Zam, which means the effects of drug abuse. Thank you very much. You wrote two songs, but how would they be useful for the youth? I have recorded these two songs in All India Radio and Cable TV and Doodarshan Kendra. They become popular songs today. As I have mentioned earlier, Rotar Tang Fan Fan has been adopted in the syllabus of Class 9 since 2001. Could you please tell me the other contents of Rotar Tang Fan Fan? If you cannot tell me the meanings of only some of the contents, how do the songs go? Some of the meaning of the lines. The youth make your greatest effort. Yeah, something like that. So what else do you, <laughs> do you write in, in the song? I think you encourage them in the song. Yeah. To do what? Uh, to abstain? Not to do a, a drug. Oh. Drug abuse is a real like a sin for the youth. I want them not to, to touch this, all kinds of drugs, smoking, number four and all this. Even liquor? Yeah, liquor. If they abuse drugs, they cannot be a good citizens and they cannot be useful yeah, for the yeah. country, for the community, for yeah, the society. That's right. And Madam, I have come to know that you are also interested in wildlife protection. What are your contributions to that? Do tell me please. Wildlife. I have written five or six songs on the subject, which are some of the songs I'll tell you. Ting Le Mao Te Anvalu means how precious the vegetations or plants. And number two, Sava Te Moi Ramtin. Birds are singing sweetly. Let us not kill them. And Nung Cha Te Ao O, the cries of wildlife and others. Yes. In the past, the little boys are roaming in the jungle uh, near the village, uh, trying to kill birds. Though they are very, very small, they wanted to eat their meat. But <laughs> nowadays, we yeah. must protect them yes. not to eat. If we want to eat meat, we have to go to market. Okay? Yes, yes. We can buy it easily. We have chicken, okay. <laughs> cows and Instead pigs and all that. Instead of eating mm -hmm. such small and trifle animals, mm -hmm. God made them as his will. Yeah, that's right. Yes, now we know that you compose songs. In addition to songs, what else have you done? I've written books and published two books, which are quantly its botanical name is Biscofia javanica, Kwangtli, which was printed in 1998. Okay, Kwangtli is the name of? 
what? A tree. Tree. Yes. Yeah, one kind of tree. Yeah. And it was also included in the Book of the Year Top 20. Top 20. In book 1998. Of the year selected by? Yeah, selected uh, by, by the Mizo Academy of Academy Letters. Of, okay. It was published in 1998. Right. And number two, Kulva. Kulva means the Drongos. That is, the Drongos is the botanical name, no? Yeah, the name of the a bird. Bird. Yeah. Which was published in 1993. These two books have been printed three times each. How many copies all together printed so far, the two books? Mm, about 7,000 copies each, I think. Okay, for the name of your book, the title of the book is Kuang Thi and the other is Kulva. Why did you use Kuang Thi as a title of your book? Because I think the, the, name, of the name of the tree is uh, appropriate, you know, it oh. is a preservation, uh, the need of preservation of trees and vegetations and wildlife. So I like, I chose this. Anyway, uh, of those different trees, Kuang tree is one kind of tree. One kind of uh, tree. What is the importance of that Kuang tree, you know, tree the, to animals? The fruit of Kuang tree is um, very much liked by yeah. birds. Fruit. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's why. Then Kulfa is the name of a bird. Yeah. Okay? The king of the bird. The king of the bird. Yeah. I see. Because it's being the king of the bird. You selected it yeah. to be the title of your book. Yes. Okay, it's quite appropriate. Thank you very much. It's a good deal of contributions towards life protection mm -hmm. also. Madam, let me go back to the life of the youth. Have you any hope to find a way for leading the young men and women to the right path of life? Since today, many young men and women are going away from the right path. If they continue this practice, it will be suffered by all society, the whole society, the village, the cities, the country, even the country. So, what is your hope? Have you any hope? Of course, if all people work together, we can change them to normal and useful citizens, I hope. I think a family is the first important institution to teach them. School teachers, social workers, and even political leaders are all important to do this work. Okay, yes, the family is the first important institution. I think you are right. If the parents teach their children very well, yeah, they can check. Yes. We can minimize many of these malpractices. To some extent, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then how do the school teacher can be useful. Yeah, they also can be. They can do at least to mold the characters of their school children. Then mm -hmm. you also mentioned the political leaders. How can the political leaders be useful in making the life of the young men and women uh, to check them from abusing what kind of sex and drugs and liquor and many other evil things? The political leaders are generally to do administration. They rule the country. Can they also be useful for teaching these young men and women? How can they be useful? <laughs> it's <laughs> very idea. difficult to <laughs> explain. Yeah, of course. They can do, at least if they practice this corruption and all this. Okay. The younger generation to they can set an example, yeah. mm. a good example yeah. for the young ones. From your answer, I come to know that you are an optimist. <laughs> well, some people, <laughs> many people are pessimist. They have no hope at all to rebuild the life of the youth. So many people despair to lead the, these young men and women to lead to the right path. Uh, let us now try to wind up our talk. Okay. Thank you very, very much for giving me good opportunity for this interview. May God continue his blessings upon you and your family in order that you may work for God and for our country, for the society. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.